Hi, my name is Hubwood and welcome to my How to Use MSI Afterburner tutorial for beginners, intermediates and professionals. Today I'll show you how to use this very powerful tool to accomplish the following. Measuring your temperatures and system infos and showing those fancy in-game statistics. Overclocking, recording games and your screen, benchmark the FPS of your in-game sessions. This won't be a super quick tutorial, but instead intends to teach you how to fully enjoy this great app. If you want to jump right into a section, please look in the video description for the timestamps. If you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, please like, subscribe and share. Thank you! Before we begin, make sure you've downloaded the newest version of MSI Afterburner. For this video, I'm using version 4.5. Please be aware that Reaver Tuner Statistics Server will also be installed in this process and this program is needed for the in-game statistics display. So you better install it too. Be aware that your version might use a different skin than I do. To change this, click on the settings button or the gear icon, then at the top go to user interface and choose a skin that you like. The first thing we'll do is to make sure that Afterburner starts with Windows every time. For this to happen, click on this small startup icon over here and then go to the settings menu and also activate start with Windows right over here as well as the start minimized. This makes things just a little bit more comfortable and many options actually need Afterburner to run all the time which is not a problem, as it almost doesn't use any resources. Same goes for Reva Tuner. Measuring all the temperatures and stuff and showing the on-screen display information, also called OSD. Now we're going to have a look at how to measure all these system informations that Afterburner is able to read for us. You might have noticed that at the start you can already see some grass stuff going on at the bottom. In my case it shows three graphs columns as I adjusted this in the settings menu. This option is found at the monitoring submenu right over here. If I choose two, I will only see two right now. If you click on the detach button, you'll get all the information at one side. This window might look a bit different for your PC as it also depends on what hardware you use, how many cores and threads your CPU has, etc. etc. You can adjust which infos you'll get by activating and deactivating those little hooks over here in the monitoring submenu, those hooks, and everything that you will activate or deactivate will show up on this screen. But what most of you want to know is how to get those infos right into your game. Now to start, you will need to select which information you actually want to see in-game. Open the monitoring submenu once more and make sure to check the show in on-screen display hook for all the infos that you actually want Afterburner to show you on the in-game overlay. So for example, we click the memory usage and now if we activate this hook, it will be shown on our OSD. All the infos that you selected to show in-game We'll also have this little tag here called in OSD over there at the right side. By the way, the LCD tag is used to mark all the infos that will show up in your Logitech keyboard's LCD display if you have one. After this, I strongly recommend you to assign hotkeys in the on-screen display submenu to toggle the on-screen display infos. I'm using my numpads 4, 5 and 6 to do this. So you can switch it off and on when you're in-game, just like this. Now before you can actually see those statistics in-game, you might need to open up Reva Tuner Statistics first and configure some stuff over here as well. Make sure that you also check the Start with Windows as well as the Show on-screen display options. You can either drag the 60 over here to adjust it, Look, you can see it on the screen over there or manually enter the positions in pixels, like this.
With this bar, you can also change the size of your OSD infos. You can also further adjust the looks with those options over here. For example, you can have a background to be able to read it much better. Or, for example, add a shadow to the font, which will make it readable much better. Or you can also use the old style, which I don't really like. This was the style people use in, in older videos, you might recognize it. But I prefer the newest one because it's much clearer and better arranged. You can also change the font of the OSD over here, like this little arrow over there. You can change this. If the OSD is not working for you, please try to restart Afterburner and Reboot Tuner as well as your PC. Some few games actually have problems showing the OSD. And sometimes it's just a button that you've probably missed. For my setup, I also activated the frame times graph. It's this one over here. Which you can do in the Reboot Tuner setup menu, right over there. By activating the Enable Frame Time History Overlay button, just at this little hook. And make sure you also check the Show Own Statistics, because if you don't, it will disappear. Congratulations! Now you're officially nerd material and ready to keep an eye on those temperatures. Overclocking with MSI Afterburner. For overclocking your PC's graphic card, your control center is basically over here. By the way, this works as well on laptops, especially if they have a dedicated NVIDIA GPU. Some GPUs don't allow all the bars to be adjusted. If they are grayed out, like this one, and can't be controlled, you'll just have to work with what you get. For my Zotac GTX 1080 Mini, I can adjust everything except the core voltage. But before you start, I recommend you download MSI Combustion and install it right away as this is another great tool to test your graphic card stability. Once you installed it, restart Afterburner and then click on this K button over here. This will immediately open up Combustion and start the so-called burn-in test where you can check the outcome of the changes that you've made over here. If you overdid it, your display drivers will probably crash and Afterburner will automatically reset all the values. Don't worry, it's very unlikely that you damage your hardware with this especially if you can't change the core voltage. To begin overclocking, you start raising the core clock by 25 to 50 MHz over here. Then you click on the supply button over here and see if combustion is still working without any flaws. Wait a few seconds or minutes and continue with the next 25 to 50 MHz and so on. If you reach a point when combustion starts flickering or crashing, you might try to raise the power limit over there by 5-10% to 10 if your graphic card supports this. If it doesn't, this is where you stop adjusting the core clock. Write down your maximum stable value, apply it and then continue the same procedure with the memory clock bar. Like for example, if the maximum that we can achieve without crashing is 160, you apply this, write down 160 so you can reset it if it crashes. And then we do the same procedure with the memory clock. Usually the memory clock can be adjusted much higher than the core clock. It's not always like this, but in most cases. To ensure maximum stability, I recommend subtracting around 10 to 20 or 30 MHz from your last stable values. Once you've found your perfect overclocking settings, you can save them as a profile to quickly apply them. Just apply your settings. Then click on this little disk icon over here and then choose the profile of your liking. I for example have two settings. One maximum overclock over here. This is the maximum that I can do for my car. And some more conservative overclocking over here. I also recommend that you save the default setting on slot 1. Now if you set the hotkeys for those profiles in the submenu called profiles over here. You can quickly jump between those settings, even in-game, and immediately see the difference your overclocking makes FPS-wise, which is pretty cool, you nerd. And let me show you what I mean. Right now, I have around 137, 36-ish frames per second, and I have the standard values for my GPU. Now I will activate my second profile, and immediately my FPS will go up. And I can also redo, uh, undo this 
by activating profile number one, which is my standard value, and go back to my standard values again. By the way, it's also important to keep an eye on your temperatures when overclocking your GPU. Depending on your system, I would try to keep it below 80 or like 85 degrees. If you can adjust the temperature limit, Afterburner will try to automatically set this temperature as maximum and accordingly adjust the fan speed, if you have this on automatic. So right now I have a temp limit of 83. Once it gets near this, the fan speed will pump up to 100%. Recording videos with MSI Afterburner. MSI Afterburner is also able to record your games or even your Windows desktop. Open the settings menu and over here open the video capture menu. You will need to set a capture hotkey of your choice to be able to start and stop the recording. I also recommend using the MJPEG compression video format and the AVI container format. Depending on your CPU and GPU, recording can quite take away some performance of your system. I recommend using a maximum of 95% quality or even less for slower systems. For frame size, over here, just pick your display resolution if you want the maximum quality. If you have a fast system and want to record games for benchmarking reasons, I recommend using 60fps so you can actually feel the extra fps when watching your video. For let's plays, tutorials and other stuff, 30fps could be enough. The videos will also use twice as much disk space if you choose 60fps over 30fps. If you don't need more than 30fps, you can also activate the frame rate limit to save some performance and energy while recording. Also, make sure to choose a destination folder for your videos. If your videos turn out to be too dark, make sure you check the Enable Gamma Correction hook over here. If your editing software has problems working with the videos you've recorded, make sure to check this hook over here to ensure maximum compatibility. In most cases, you can leave the rest of the settings untouched. If you did set up the OSD, as explained in chapter 1 of this video, you will be able to see that Afterburner is recording. You will also immediately see the impact it has on your frame rate if you're recording in-game sessions. Let's have a look. So, I'm going to press the hotkey for the recording. Take a look at the FPS. They will immediately go down and at the bottom you will see this little information at how long the video is, how big the file size is and some other stuff. Once I press it again and it stops, this will disappear. Benchmark your in-game FPS. Afterburner has a comfortable tool to benchmark your in-game FPS. This includes maximum FPS, minimum FPS, average FPS 1% low and 0.1% low. Those values will be saved in a text file for you to review after you've benchmarked a session. Open your settings menu and go to the benchmark submenu. Set hotkeys of your choice for starting and ending the benchmark. I personally use my numpad 1 and 3 for this, so it's next to my 4, 5 and 6, which activate and deactivate my OSD. Now when you're in-game and start the benchmarking by pressing the designated hotkey, a counter will start and immediately show you the mentioned values over here. If you hit that button once more, it will restart the session. If you hit the stop button once, it will stop the benchmark. If you hit it twice, the infos will disappear and the file will be saved. Afterburner will add infos for each benchmark session into the text file, one after another. Limit your frame rate. With Reva Tuner, you can easily limit your maximum frame rate. This can be helpful to save energy, especially on laptops, to spare your hardware and to keep your coolers quiet. It can also help a lot to stabilize your gameplay if your frame rates are unstable and the game is stuttering. To do so, just enter your desired maximum frame rate in this little window in Reva Tuner over here. For example, I will now enter 65 FPS. Now if I go in-game, 65 is the maximum that I will get. Take a look at the load of my GPU at the top. It's now only at 32% because it's kind of bored out. Same goes for my CPU. This will result in lower temperatures and a much lower power consumption. 
By the way, to uh, disable the frame limiting, just enter a zero into the frame limit window and it will be disabled. So that's all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section. Thanks for watching, see you next time and bye bye.